Ahoy, this is Denka from Boring to Creative in any location, even if the location is not too flattering, as we are right now in transition from winter to spring. Let's correct some mistakes when it comes to choosing the right lens, composition, framing, working with sun position, and finally, adjusting the clip and color grading it in a post. This is a tutorial for beginners. I will be using iPhone 15 Pro. Most of the video will be filmed in native camera app, just in automatic mode in 4K resolution and 60 frames per second. So I have the flexibility to slow it down in a post. So let's move around and uh, look at the first mistake I see. Many people want to show off large location. So they will select ultra wide angle lens and they just show off this whole place. There's no really detail. It looks kind of like just a field. Better solution would be selecting one time standard lens, locking the exposure and just slowly panning sideways. You will see the building a little bit closer and not as much of the ground. This is not the final look, however. Let's slow down this clip 40% and add more movement by placing a keyframe at the beginning of the clip, leaving the clip at 100% scale and placing another keyframe at the end of the clip, zooming in 120%. Now, when you play the clip, you will see panning movement and also zooming in at the same time. I'm at pretty location, offering many possibilities. A lot of people would come here and literally pull up their phone, probably go as close to the possible to the lake, take a shot, selected maybe ultra wide angle lens so they see everything. It would get very distorted. Let me show you. So here is my ultra wide angle shot of the location. Or some people would actually back up a little bit. They would select standard lens to get nice view of this location without the distortion and take a shot. But there's a lot more you can do here. Exercise number one would be exploring the place, meaning going to the side, going to the other side, going close to the lake, going further from the lake, trying different angles, hiding behind the foreground. Let me start from the right side. I'm gonna try to go as far as I can without falling anywhere and see what kind of angle I get. As soon as you move to a different area, you will see a completely different view. Composition is the key here. As the sky has no clouds, it's just plain blue space. You see a lot more going on below the sky. This is the reason I placed the horizon on the upper line of the grid and did my best to keep it there as I was moving up, revealing the lake. The grid also helps to keep the horizon straight. I also positioned myself so the tree is not in the middle, but rather on the side, giving it a balanced look. Once you slow down the clip and add a little bit of a color grading, you're going to get this type of a shot. Let's do another shot in the same location, but this time right in the center. For this shot moving forward, I don't want to take any chance. So I enabled the sports mode and obviously I'm getting 2.8K, but I'm still going to be filming in 60 frames per second. I have to go really deep into my knees, hoping that I can keep the horizon straight. And I will select ultra wide angle lens for this one. If you leave it in the real speed, you will see the up and down movement too much. If you slow it down 40%, the movement is too slow. Let's add a little trick. So it seems as I was walking faster from further distance. We are simply going to add a zoom in effect. Place a keyframe at the beginning of the clip and leave the scale 100%. Then add another keyframe at the end of the clip and scale it 120%. Now, once you play the clip, 
it looks as I was walking from a bigger distance much faster. Now I move myself all the way to the left and I'm seeing this beautiful foreground which can reveal completely different angle of that location. So for this one, I'm going to be filming in 4K again. I don't need the stabilization on now, but I am going to stay with standard lens. What's the important thing to do is to lock the exposure and brightness for the back. And I can try to go a little bit higher now. I was hoping to slow down that part of the clip, 40%, where the grass is touching the lens when it's covering. But unfortunately, with this model, 15 Pro, I cannot do that anymore. I could do that with 14 Pro and the previous ones, but not with this one. 15 Pro is having a hard time keeping the exposure the same, even though it was locked. Hopefully that will get fixed with a future firmware update down the road. Instead, I had to select a different part of the clip. Regardless, I have another helpful tip for you. If you end up with a crooked horizon as I did, as it is simply very difficult to keep the horizon completely straight if you are filming handheld, that is why I prefer using a gimbal, you can rotate the clip in the post to have the horizon straight and then simply zoom in on the clip a bit, about 105%, to get rid of, of the areas where you see that you rotated the clip. Little details make a huge difference. Final shot at this location is here. All I had to do is simply stay on the same spot on the left, only turn around. It's very crucial to select the right lens. As you can see, if I'm going to select ultra wide angle lens, there is nothing really that pretty or exciting or interesting about this angle. If I'm going to select one time, it's the same thing. So, so I'm not liking it, but a lot will change if I select two times telephoto and just very slowly pan to the side. I will see a lot of details on the lake and I will see all the also the branches there, the trees. Let's move to different location where another exercise will happen. I will take the same close-up shots of the same object three different ways in three different lighting setups. First, I'm going to take the clips just with a regular telephoto camera lens on this smartphone. And then I'm going to do the same shots with edit telephoto two times telephoto lens. Sandmark sent me these lenses to test. This is the first time I'm going to use one of their lenses. To be honest, I have never heard of this company before. It says they were designed in California. As you can see, they have the typical line of lenses where you get a wide angle lens, telephoto, macro, fish eye, and 1.55 times anamorphic lens. But there are two lenses others don't have microscope lens and telephoto six times. I will feature those in the upcoming videos, so don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. I will link all those lenses below. Just out of curiosity, here are some sample shots with the microscope lens. But the telephoto six times I'm gonna leave for next tutorial because honestly, I can't wait to go outside somewhere in the nature and stand right beside the wildlife photographers with those massive lenses and pull this out. I can't wait for the reaction. <laughs> By the way, this also has a focus. This is a focus ring. I'm pretty excited about this one. We will see what we can do with this. Tutorial is coming up. Back to two times telephoto lens. Obviously, two times telephoto will bring you closer to the object, but at the same time, it's going to give you the natural bouquet, the soft background. And that's something I wanted to test here. Here are the first three shots just with a telephoto lens on this smartphone, and they will be completely different. In this first shot, the sun is on the left side. The left side of the object will be lit up and the right side will be much darker. This creates a big contrast. 
The second shot is being filmed against the sun. You will get those streaks, the light sparkle, although the object is very dark here. The last shot is with the sun in the back. It's going to look a bit flat, but because the color of the object is such a deep dark brown, the light here brings out the details that also look interesting. Don't be afraid to experiment with the light. When I'm out there, I literally walk 360 degrees around the object and checking what looks the best, what lighting looks the best. As you could see, wherever you position yourself, you will get very different results. Okay, moving on. So now let me do the same shots, but this time I'm going to apply the telephoto lens. I will select just a standard lens on a camera. This is the first shot with the sun on the left side, again with the Sandmark telephoto lens. Let's compare the shots. Here it is, side by side, shot without the telephoto lens and with the added telephoto lens. Let's move on to a shot filmed against the sun and again, let's place them side by side. And lastly, here is a shot with the sun in the back. And once again, let's show side by side shot. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. What did you see? Did you see more depth? Did you see the more bokeh? Did you see any difference? Which one did you like better? I'd like to hear from you. And finally, let's just review the shots edited together with the music. By the way, all the music is from Epidemic Sound Music Service. I'll link it below. You will get one month free. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to check out one of these videos next. See you on the next one. Ciao. Ahoy.